Hello and welcome to another episode of the Small Gold Speculation Series where I ask a series of questions for you to think about. I don't necessarily conclude anything. And then you get a chance to write in the comments section what you think might be happening. Today I want to talk about the cashless and China conspiracy theories. The first one is a warm-up. You've heard the first one before. It deals with what is the underlying potential purpose or scheme involved with Bitcoin. The second one really hasn't been discussed very much and it has to do with China and gold. And let's take a look now at today's questions. So is Bitcoin a gateway to a cashless society? Well, obviously Bitcoin is a cashless currency and some have suggested, and this is something I suggested also way back in 2013, that it's possible that this was greasing the skids for a cashless society. Get people used to using Bitcoin and it's cashless, and then you can usher in a government-issued cashless. Um, once Bitcoin use had become acceptable, then you basically come out with the government version of it, and then you eliminate and you tell people they can't use the non-state issued Bitcoin. And my view at the time was most people would not risk prison or fines to use a private currency the way they probably would risk fines to drink alcohol or buy firearms or to um, watch movies or, or violate copyright laws, but that just merely using a currency that was outlawed probably wouldn't happen. Okay. So, was getting libertarians and gold bugs the groups most likely to oppose a caste society to embrace it and promote it part of the plan? That's something to consider. The people that are the biggest advocates of Bitcoin have been libertarians because Bitcoin is stateless and gold bugs because many gold bugs are also in favor of quote unquote sound money and Bitcoin has this limited issuance of 21 million. So libertarians and gold bugs would be the ones that would be most likely to oppose a cashless state issued cryptocurrency, but put in front of them a shiny object like Bitcoin, promote it as um, stateless, promote it as limited in issuances, and now you have your sound money concept that attracts gold bugs, you have libertarians that are attracted to the concept of stateless, and now they're going to promote Bitcoin rather than oppose it. Because if they don't oppose it, no one else is going to oppose it. Everyone else will look at it as convenient when governments issue a state-issued digital currency. Next question. And remember, as I go through these, I'm not advocating any of these. This, this is a speculation series. Keep that in mind. So I'm throwing out ideas. I may or may not hold these beliefs. I want you to think about these questions. And the reason I'm doing Bitcoin first is because the second one is a little, you probably haven't heard as much of, maybe you haven't heard of it at all. So let's continue with Bitcoin. Does Bitcoin promotion accomplish moving capital from gold and silver and dilute the sound money message and divide sound money advocates? It's kind of a leading question, but we have seen many gold and silver proponents move over and start promoting Bitcoin. Has capital moved away from gold and silver on the retail sales side? I would say based on what I see from the US mint sales, definitely. We are looking at lower retail sales for gold and silver and we are definitely seeing money moving into the cryptos. But probably more important than that small amount of money because the US mint doesn't really sell in the grand scheme of things a great percentage of the world's gold or silver, especially gold. More importantly, does it divide the sound money advocates? Meaning, instead of having one consistent sound money message, which is gold and silver are money, gold and silver are limited in supply, gold and silver have been money for thousands of years, you know, have a certain number of people saying, get with the program, man, Bitcoin is the future, Bitcoin is digital gold, and so on. Next question. Was Jamie Dimon's attack on Bitcoin meant to encourage an impassioned defense of Bitcoin? 
Now, if you think about it, Jamie Dimon is the poster boy for people that are libertarian, people that are free-minded, people that are gold bugs, silver bugs. They hate Jamie Dimon. They think Jamie Dimon is the worst. Jamie Dimon runs J.P. Morgan. Other than Goldman Sachs, nothing is worse to libertarians, gold bugs, silver bugs than J.P. Morgan and Jamie Dimon. Well, if you want to go with the theory that you want libertarians and gold bugs to promote the cash of society via their promotion of Bitcoin, who better than to trot out than Jamie Dimon to say Bitcoin is a fraud? Well, that's going to lead to, and we've already seen it, every website, whether it's a crypto site or even a gold site, has trashed Jamie Dimon for trashing Bitcoin, pointing out the obvious, ha, 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 you're calling it a fraud, Bitcoin, but what is J.P. Morgan? J.P. Morgan has paid $40 billion in fines related to things like fraud. Well, if that's part of the plan, if you go with the theory that you're trying to get gold bugs libertarians to promote Bitcoin, what better way than to get Jamie Dimon out there trashing Bitcoin? What are people going to do? They're going to turn around and say, I'm even more convinced that I need to have Bitcoin. Because if Jamie Dimon's against it, then I am for it. All right, so think through those questions. But now I want to move on to something, now that your brain might be a bit activated, is this other narrative that is being pushed that somehow China because they love gold and the BRICs love gold and Russia, all these countries are buying gold, that somehow that makes them, in a sense, morally superior. Now, they don't use those terms, but the praise that's heaped upon China, they know where the game is at. They're playing 4D chess. They're given this status as if somehow, because they like gold, they are this wonderful, wonderful country, and they're going to crash the dollar. They're going to de-dollarize. They've convinced gold bugs that the dollar is the enemy. There's dollar collapse. There's all these things out there that basically trash the, as if somehow if you live in the West the dollar going away and being replaced by a group of countries like Iran, Venezuela, and China is good for you because you happen to have gold and they like gold too. After all, Venezuela repatriated their gold and trotted it through the streets. Now, interestingly enough, gold bugs and libertarians are supposed to be totally opposed to totalitarian governments like Venezuela because they see what it leads to. China, communism is the most opposite to a libertarian or free money, sound money type of thinking. Now, if you think about China, so, so what? China buys gold. They are a communist, centrally planned country that uses massive amounts of debt stimulus in their country. And that seems to be lost on libertarians and gold bugs when they hear that China is getting, acquiring gold. They seem to be blindsided and they seem to be cheering on China, forgetting what China actually is. Ignoring that China has executed a thousand people over the last year, ignoring that the censorship on the internet is far worse in China than it is at Google or in the United States. So the question is, does this promotion of China constantly, China is going to back the yuan with gold, and that makes them wonderful because they're going to crash the dollar and the petrodollar is dead. The question is, as if that's good, that China will run the financial system because somehow gold is involved. That means that it's good and it's sound money. So does this promotion of China as a buyer of gold endear them to sound money advocates who find the dollar-based system problematic? And what I'm seeing is people are cheering on China on the assumption that China wakes up in the morning and thinks about one thing, buying gold and crashing the dollar. Next question. Are gold bugs being played? Because if you look at the two of them, they've managed to perhaps, I'm not saying this is the case, convince and take people that are libertarians and gold bugs and move them away from gold and into Bitcoin. And also to move them away from their 
supposedly deep-seated hatred of communist and socialist countries and actually have them cheer on the recent Venezuelan announcement. Oh, Venezuela, they're not going to take dollars anymore. Game over. Yeah, they're going to take Chinese yuan because they've had enough of the dollar. But I thought libertarians had had enough of seeing pictures of people starving in Venezuela and waiting online because there is for food because there is no free market. So it seems to me, now I'll give you my opinion, that the answers to the two questions, I'm going to give you my answers now. The cashless and China conspiracy. As to cashless, I am not convinced that Bitcoin is a plan to go cashless. I think Bitcoin is a private invention. However, I do believe that it is running parallel to government plans to go cashless. And I think the government can use the adoption of Bitcoin as a way of getting people used to cashless. And then if they wish to issue their own, they have the experiment of Bitcoin. But I don't necessarily believe they invented Bitcoin for this purpose. I believe technology has come along. Uh, yes, I believe that the government probably had their own versions of cashless. But I think that the proliferation of all of the altcoins and so on, theres I don't think the government has anything to do with that. I think that and if they did, that the genie got out of the bottle and it became Frankenstein because they're clearly not in control of the crypto and the ICOs. It was just too much of that going on. As to the promotion of China as a buyer of gold, masking communist China's centrally planned debt-driven ways, I believe absolutely. I believe you see in the alternative financial media people just cheering. These are gold bugs cheering that Venezuela is not going to use the dollar. The dollar has become the enemy and China has become the hero. And that to me is more astounding than people accepting Bitcoin because the arguments that Bitcoin is stateless and is limited in value, I can see how that might have appeal to somebody who is liberty minded or even a gold bug. Not saying that they have to agree that Bitcoin is digital gold, but when I see liberty-minded people and gold bugs cheering on Venezuela, Iran, China, totalitarian countries in different ways, either theocracy or ideology, then I think gold bugs are being played. When they cheer on Chinese back, you want stories. First of all, when stories are fake, they cheer them on anyway because they want them so ardently to be true. So in other words, they want China to be so immersed in gold and to crush the dollar. Then I think, yes, perhaps gold bugs are being played. Let me have your thoughts.